I think we started talking in in uh, June or July. Yeah. And if I just look at my um, uh, my last uh, what is it few uh, oh, few months. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see it. Okay. Yeah, so if you look at it here. Um, okay. Today we have uh, Swery. Um, I'm kind of having an interview with him because he's actually he runs an e-commerce store. He's from Norway as well. And so he's an e-commerce entrepreneur. Uh, and before uh, we met, uh, sorry, what, what type of numbers were you doing? Like per month? Uh, so I had like a really slow time um, starting from Black Friday 2019 all the way. And then, of course, Corona hit. Yep. So when it was May, I don't know if you can see my screen now, in May, like I had number of zero days. Yep. And I, I was... Uh, below breaking even or just broke even it just died everything just died I used an agency and I didn't know um, I didn't know how to handle like and my first email with you was June 4th mm. so if you go to June 4th here I didn't start immediately with your strategy so June 4th was actually a good day mm. and yeah I had a I had a $1,500 day but that was the best day I had all year and okay. that was the day I, I talked to you the first time. And I had like real liquidity problems because of this, because I had, I lost uh, about $250,000 because mm. of this. Mm. Uh, so from June 4th up until, it took me about a week and a half to really get going. And as you can see from, from the screen, uh, now the average is uh, just every single day is good. And my sales are about three, four times as much uh, okay. as they were. You mentioned you did what? Is it 450? But this is without scaling. I still yeah. have a problem finding enough merchandise. So I haven't scaled ads since June, uh, July. Yeah. Yeah. I just stepped on that level and it's so hard to get enough merchandise. Yep. So this is not representative about how good it's going. It should mm -hmm. be twice, three times of this. So I'm taking it careful because of another thing you taught me was uh, when you showed me the internal rating system, mm. which I had never heard of before. And um, because of the internal rating system and because I was aware of it, I was able to mitigate the problems uh, that other people have not been able to mitigate, mm. getting under uh, under the threshold level, which has been incredibly important. So right now my, my rating is something like 3.5, I think. Or, so it's, it's doing really well, the rating, consumer feedback rating. Okay. And this is all uh, Norwegian market only, right? Norwegian market, single product, mm -hmm. one store. Okay. And in the meantime, I've lost another. I, I've I've launched another business. This is that now. We have just sales every. <laughs> we launched here. Yep. And uh, we we're just uh, getting started now. It's just like the first test, getting our um, uh, getting our averages up, so we can buy ads and do basically everything again, but in a much larger scale and also in many countries. Okay. So because like before, before we met, you were already doing uh, some sales, right? So can you tell me like what exactly was the change that allowed you to scale? Uh, is it like the te techniques? Is it like how I like to see my, what I do is like one landing page, one offer, and then I drive tons of traffic. So what do you think was the difference for to you to get to the next level? Well, it was the confidence because um, the reason why it worked so well, I mean, of course it was, it had to work at that moment. Yeah. Like I didn't have an, I didn't have a plan B at all. Like this was, this was the, almost the, the end of uh, where I thought like, I, uh, if I'm going to do it, this has to be right now. Mm. And I just remember um, my parents were here uh, like the, <laughs> the day, almost the day of okay. when, when I had to talk with you. Yeah. And uh, I had angry customers on one side and I had some, some creditor calls and I had everything at once. Like, because you, when you have, uh, when, when things slow down, all of a sudden a bunch of things happen. <laughs> and I just remember that, that drive we took for two hours and I had like 50 calls from all kinds of parties and it was so stressful. Mm -hmm. And the next day I started selling. That was like literally the next day it started opening up. And the liquidity came back and came way back, like much better than before. Hmm. So now I'm doing what's equivalent or the, 
if you're gonna if you're gonna extrapolate it to a year, it would be about six hundred thousand dollars maybe, mm-hmm. and uh, that would equivalent be equivalent to maybe two hundred thousand profit. And if your you net, net margin is what like around thirty thirty five percent? Is it? Yeah, I spend about thirty on product, thirty on okay. ads, and thirty on approximately. Okay, understood. So what, what exactly? What I got from yeah. you was the confidence. I mean, I didn't have any confidence in because uh, like eight months of just like uh, dread. Yeah. And uh, it started Black Friday 2019, mm. which is now, uh, uh, which is now, um, and by the way, I used an agency back then, yeah. which, uh, which uh, controlled my uh, budget. So the reason why I had such a disaster uh, experience after Black Friday was because they were, they were killing my budget yeah. from the Ukraine. And I had no impact, uh, no impact, no uh, control over any of this. Yeah. So it was an awful situation to be in. So I mean, cause like you, you can clearly see like here, right? Like this is just massive, like around what, three, four times increase, right? Yeah. So, but then again, it's like- You have to, no, no, yeah. way more than that. I think it's, if you look at, you have to look at the sort of the mass. Yeah. And you look at the end, like here from uh, October 7th. Yep. It's just not a down day. Everything yep. is up. So yeah. Okay. And like this, this is uh, actually a pretty realistic scaling. Sorry. So now you're very good. Yeah. So often when you see people that scale, they do it in almost a straight line, and it's from zero, and then it's like one, and then four, and then ten, and then and you end up in like ten thousand dollar days. Mm. Yes, you can. But the real issue is the goods. If it's a digital good, that's fine. You can do that. But the, the logistics and the problems that come alongside, I think that cannot be overstated how problematic that is. Mm. The logistical issues. It's really not about the ad. It's not about the technique. It's about getting enough merchandise and handling the people that are disappointed because in Corona, you have all these new different kind of problems that you didn't have before. Mm. And handling all these things is equally important as knowing like the techniques of, of making a Facebook ad. Because that's become significantly easier since yeah. I did my first one. Basically, you can trust automation in a lot of these things. But... Um, but like having... Like responding to customers and these things are incredibly important. Like I do probably a third of my sales on the phone. Mm. So you look at, uh, if you look at the orders, I don't know if you can see it in this screen here. Uh, But if you look at uh, the analytics here, from this year, if you look at here, it says draft orders. Mm. Yep. Uh, That's about 14,000. And then you have here where you have Shopify for Android. That's also a draft order. Yeah. So that's twenty thousand dollars in sales mm. on the phone. Yeah, but I mean that's because your product is high ticket, right? So it's necessary, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's it's incredibly important because really what you're selling is uh, you're selling uh, like a uh, believing someone, like the, mm. the confidence in in um, in believing that the product is what you think it is, and. And it's also a, quite a good way to mitigate um, uh, the drop shippers because we have a, a number of drop shippers here locally that mm. masquerade as being a local company. Yep. And about 30 to 50%, at least in my sector for sure. And uh, when you're actually on the phone, you're speaking a local language and you're yeah, like a small thing trust. I picked up, like you put up, you put up just a flag. Mm. No, like a, a map, I mean, sorry. Yeah. And you just say, here I am, like right here at the office in the middle of the center. Stuff like that matters a lot. Like mm-hmm. you wouldn't think it do. Uh, it does, but it really, it really does. Okay. Um, besides confidence, because <laughs> confidence is like a, it's a mental thing. But uh, like no, but action, I, action gets you results. So what, what exactly? Okay. Uh, yeah. From you? Yeah. Like when you, the way you broke down, especially something I really liked was the way you broke down traffic into cold. I don't know what uh, yeah. I still don't remember what you call it, but <laughs> but like the cold medium, cold medium and warm. Yeah. 
was really effective to understand how it works. And uh, but, but basically, like you solved 50 problems for me. It's hard to say exactly what it was because mm. it was because I knew this. You can always always read or or watch on YouTube and you find out a majority of things. But it was so believable. Like what you're selling is is uh, confidence in mm. in yourself and also believing what you're saying. So right now this is a live uh, Shopify, of course. Yeah. And uh, when I sorry, so can you hear me? Yeah, you got cut off. Yeah, no, I just got a call, but then it just cut off, cut off. So you're seeing my live uh my live shopify yeah and that matters a lot when you're gonna buy like a person like me is gonna trust you mm. because it's live like this is a very familiar scene and i think e-commerce is also about like just believing what you're being told yep it's uh, difficult it's difficult to to you know, to, okay, so to I mean, deliver what people are expecting enough about me right sweet i uh, sorry um, how did you get into the game? No, how, how did you start? You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how did you start uh, e-commerce? How do I start selling? Or yeah, what? how do you because, even get yeah, yeah the, your first first steps into this? When I was a student, uh, I uh, bought my my sister a Christmas present, mm. which was it's called the Orgasmatron. It sounds crazy to give it to your sister, but it's like a head massager. Yeah, and it was an Australian product, and uh, I became uh, like I delivered it to a few stores and. And that was my first uh, taste of import. Hmm. And uh, and then I have another friend who, I, I ran a car rental business where I had a fleet of cars and then he rented one car a friend and he was uh, delivering it back. And I heard a Shopify, the notification when you had the sales yep. and he showed me like how it worked. And that was like literally the notification sound was the reason why I started. And then I drop shipped <laughs> for a bit. Okay. Because he told me about the drop shipping. Yeah. I, I broke even, maybe a little, made a little bit of money, sold fucking bullshit to America. Yep. And, uh, oh, yeah, I can't hear you. I think I'm back. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's done. It's done. I'm getting another call. And uh, I, I show, sold bullshit to Americans, mm. but that, like, it, the product is low quality and also it's... Uh, uh, the, the shipment is so important. Like the the two things that people care about, by the way, yeah. when you buy something, is that it's shipped fast, and uh, you reply to an email or a phone call. It's the two most important things when you're going to sell something. Okay. So you how wouldn't think that's yeah. important. So that's why drop shipping is a is a completely non-starter. Like you can't yeah. do it. Yeah. I in see. my view. How how did you um? come to even uh so you bought your, your Chris, uh, sister uh a present right then you saw there's a market for it then you went to sell a similar product yes okay 12 years ago 15 years ago <laughs> but okay but that was my first uh, taste of it yeah so i mean how and, does uh, the business and then transition? I, I, I had the because you you drop ship right then after a while yeah you after a while you realized hey, this is not sustainable yeah so i how? dropped it then i stopped hmm. and then I, I i needed an ozone generator for a car that smelled like shit that I had. And it was so expensive to buy here. So I bought it from a guy on eBay, which turned out to be one of my suppliers now. Mm. And I bought a single machine and I put it up on our local version of eBay and it was sold before I got it. So I bought two more uh, with the same amount of money mm. and I kept selling them on like eBay like markets. And obviously people were interested enough that they were searching for it. And it's kind of like a product that people know, but they can't find it locally, but it's expensive, it's technical, it's difficult. So I sold like five machines, which was all f uh, funded from that one machine. Mm -hmm. And then I had some tiny problem and I lost all confidence and I stopped. And then a year and a half later, I picked it up again. Mm -hmm. And I put up one ad on Facebook from uh, using the, the dropshipper guide that the guy showed me a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And it just worked. And that one machine I bought turned into pallets of machines. And by Christmas, I was making like five times more on this than anything else I was doing. 
Okay. So it was really like step by step, but I didn't invest anything. So I never had the plan to do it. So it became a little difficult because I didn't plan for it. So I had no structure in place. Okay. Understood. What, uh, because you, you are spending, uh, before you met, you were spending a certain amount. So I'm guessing you are scared to spend a bit more in that confidence thing, yeah. right? Because it like, was yeah. about $200 every day and that was what I felt that it should be. Okay. Okay. Understood. Then how, how did you yeah, transition super- from like uh, buying stock? So, uh, do you buy stock now or no? I buy what? Do you buy stock in like packages? Do you buy multiple units now? Because you say you store in the warehouse now. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So, cause that, yeah, like, I store yeah. it, but I, I, I still have a hard time having enough still after two years because mm. it's a very popular product. And because of Corona made everything a hundred times harder. Yeah. Okay. Understood. What, what do you want to take this store, uh, this current store that you scaled to? Is there some um, dollar amount? Is there something I'm gonna that you want to make it? No, but it's like a money, it's a money machine. That's sort of the, uh, the engine behind everything else. Mm. So I'm trying to, to scale this maybe to another country or two. Yep. And then of course, push the gas properly once I'm sort of where I'm, I felt like I was a year ago mm. uh, where I had the confidence and then it all, all of a sudden stopped because it, well, I was doing really well exactly one year ago before uh, Black Friday and using an agency and all this. But the, the problem when I had an agency is I had no flexibility because I couldn't control my own budget, mm. uh, which turns out to be the most important thing of everything. Yep. So. I think I also don't spend so much time analyzing the numbers, like the, the Facebook numbers. Mm. Because you have, like, I know them by heart. Like, I know what my uh, daily costs are. Mm. I know where my break even is. And I know mentally, like, where I have to be on the day to be happy. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I'm only worried about profits. And yep. I, it doesn't help me to do it on, in Excel. I mean, I do everything in Excel, yeah. except for my, my income. <laughs> Because like I know exactly what it is, uh, and I think that's incredibly important as well to just know like how much money you have. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good cash flow, cash flow management, basically. Yeah, incredibly yeah. important. Uh, your 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 increase right is like, it's almost it's like two times. It's almost the two times on this chart right here, right? So like you also told me that your ads were more consistent. Right after you implemented the yeah, SOP and blah blah blah. Yeah, that's so surprising. Why? Why? Why, why do you very think so? Consistent. And why do you think so? I I, I know why. <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to hear how, why you why you think it's more consistent. Uh, I mean, well, I, I built a framework, I, so I know why. But I want to hear your opinion. Okay. Yeah. So. I mean, I guess my guess is it's related to that the AI is getting smarter. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. my gut no. feeling that the AI is more predictable, but it's also disturbing how how predictable the nature of the sales are. But that's my own real guess. I, I don't spend time thinking about that. Why is it happening? Uh, because the, the landing page uh, template that I gave you I, is built for cold traffic. So it's supposed to bring any type of uh, customer who doesn't know you into the, the pain point and the whatever, then they're selling the benefit, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's like direct response, uh, what's it called, template. It's, it's like best, best practice. So anybody yeah. who's like, who doesn't know your brand, doesn't know, like, or trust you, is supposed to convert their customer. Yeah. Whereas in, in the past, uh, yeah. I remember, don't know whether you realized, your FAQ was like uh, very, very skeleton. There's like barely anything there. So people can't really, yeah. don't really trust that. Yeah. Yeah. And then that in, in turn, that increases profitability, which tells you that, hey, my ROAS is high. So you have more confidence to scale as well. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's why. That's but, why. It's, but it's really a confidence business. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Because you implement action and then you see a positive result. So it's like a positive feedback yeah. loop. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So right before, uh, right before um, we started talking, my new store, which... Uh, it's not really launching. We're running some ads just, uh, and I made a sale and it's remarkable okay. that tiny little $30 sale 
yeah. how much it does to you mentally. It's remarkable. Even though it doesn't matter what it's doing now and it's, it's not, not affecting my, uh, my anything plans or anything, mm. but, but numbers, like getting sales, getting the first like, few sales in, Mm. It's unlike anything else. Like it Confidence gives you energy booster. like nothing yeah. else. Unbelievable. Yeah. And it's so important. Like when you think like this shouldn't be that important because like uh, you're you're selling online and in a faceless way in a way. Yeah. But it's really the same business as it's always been. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, can I ask right, how how did you find me in the first place? Uh I'm guessing uh, one of the groups. On, uh, on the Facebook group uh, that I now left, I think. I think it's called <laughs> Facebook Ad Buyers, is it? Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, Ads Mastermind, is that the one? Uh, I think it's Ad Buyers. So, yeah. And uh, there's so many of those. And you made a video. Yeah. And I've seen a thousand videos like that. And they all kind of look like you. And they all talk like you and they're all like, <laughs> they have this solution. And, and yeah. my, my question is always the same. Why are you telling me this if it's yeah. so great? But your video stood out and I watched the whole thing and I contacted you immediately. And the reason why is uh, you uh, showed the, the workings, how it, you, you just skipped through the, how rich and how many Ferraris I'm going to have and all this. Yeah. And you skipped directly towards, like, this is what my customer did. And this is the result. And it was very like believable. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's great. Then so I mean, that that's why you contacted this in a sense trust, right? Because transparency, yeah. blah blah blah. Okay, got it. Yeah, transparency is a huge deal. Yeah. Like now showing my screen. Uh, yeah, you got nothing to hide. Uh, really nothing doing to hide. the same thing, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so I mean that now that you've got uh the knowledge, right, and the confidence to like go into any market, any industry, you know how to, to like make sales, right? Like why, what's your, um, this, the, your phone business, your phone case business, what do you plan to do with it, with your partner, et cetera? Yeah. Uh, so right now we're just, we're attacking it from about 10 different ways. Basic e-commerce is one of them. Hmm. Uh, but we have about, about 10 different, uh, ways to approach it. Like we we weren't sure if this is a pure e-commerce business, if this is like 50% e-commerce, 50% retail, like how the cost, how, how the dynamics in, in the regular retail market is. Uh, so we learned a lot about that, but mm-hmm. ultimately uh, we are selling online profitable yep. uh, and we're gonna expand um, significantly in the next like month, month and a half, two months. Mm-hmm. And then in about a month or two, we're gonna expand to a country number two because yeah. we realize that the logistics make it because it's so small and light, the product, we can just sell globally and uh, the shipping is not gonna kill us. Okay. So um, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, problem because it's more of a building of a brand. Yes. So it's just completely different. like the what you're doing. So I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure of what I'm doing, but it's a good product. And I think that's really the, the key thing. Like you cannot sell shit. Yeah. If it's good, it's just so much easier. You don't have returns, you know, because even just 2% returns, it just mm. kills you. It, it just kills your margins. Yeah. All right. So, can I, think can I ask right, why problem. you are like, uh, this, this singular product, this one, is like high, high ticket, high margin, right? So yeah. your, you went, you went to basically in the phone case business is, is the low margin volume type of business, right? So why make that change? Since you know, for example, it's like, but it's I, not low margin. Okay, okay, <laughs> low price, low AOV, right? Yeah, yeah. But still, I mean, it's, I know Both what you mean, in, but mm. if you sell a, a case and a, and a screen protector, mm. it's like fifty dollars, and they do not cost me $50, I can tell you that. Yeah. And the margins are much higher than I'm used to. Mm. Uh, and also the, um, the dynamics is just so different uh, that it feels like, if you, if you look at the other competitors, you look at the companies, you look at their numbers, you look at like you've known them the entire way, mm. it's very feasible to reach huge numbers vary but it's feasible to mm. reach huge numbers in in this 
in this market. You can do it globally, you can do it uh, hyper locally, you can do it in every which way you want. So uh, I think that's appealing. Okay. And uh, you guys are custom making the designs right now? Because you say you assembled in Norway, right? Is it? Yeah, it's partly assembled in Norway and it's uh, it's a custom thing. And so, so it's like both in terms of like quality, protecting your phone, it's uh, the best possible. Mm. And also in terms of uh, like customizing your own designs, it's also quite unique. So. Is it? Uh, and what's it's it also called? called unique, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. In Norway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unique. Is it difficult to find uh, fulfillment centers, especially because you're in um, Norway and what's the second country you're expecting? Well, to? right now we're fulfilling it ourselves. Okay, so it's straight from you don't home. don't need... Uh, yeah. What? It's straight from your house, then you fulfill? How we fulfill? Yeah, you said you're fulfilling yourself right now, right? So are you shipping from yeah, your yeah. house? Okay. No, 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 from, from the office, of course. But Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, the shipping costs when it comes to small things are are low, and also fulfilling yourself is like it's not a hard thing to do. Yeah, you can reach very very large numbers, so just do everything yourself. Maybe have one employee. Mm. So using uh, we can easily use a fulfillment center. Uh, we have it lo locally here, but I mean it's just it's just giving money away, especially when you have small products that don't weigh a lot. Uh, it's much easier. Like my other, my uh, my primary store, uh, the one you helped me with, it's yeah. a physically larger product. It makes everything more difficult, but it's still, you can still fulfill it yourself. And I yeah. think it's the best yeah. to do that. It's just more heavy. I worked with, yeah, yeah I worked with reshippers shippers and uh, people who repack. And it's just always a problem, so. Yeah. So, so I mean, like I've, uh, you're one of the few people who is like, uh, uh, you're confident to sell in the Norway market, even though it's small, right? Everybody who's job shipping, uh, generally they sell in the US, right? So what what was yeah. your decision? I did there? the same. I started in the US. Yeah, you switched for a reason, uh, right? So were you yeah. like, F it, like this sucks or what? What's the, how, how old do you think the average customer is that buy online? Uh, if, if you're gonna for, if you're gonna estimate, like what is the typical uh, person who buys? Is something online that they find on Facebook? Uh, or, uh, 28 to 32. Okay. Yeah. You know, my first, I had another business and my first customer, because I delivered it to their door just kind of to see. Mm -hmm. It was a different product, but it, uh, and that was a 70 year old man wearing uh, this like working clothes. Like he used to be a carpenter, but he was now uh, a senior citizen. Yeah. And I will say that's the average buyer. In Norway? A or? senior citizen man. They are un, a completely forgotten. And okay. I keep coming back to them. In this is the third store now, and you still see signs that they are incredibly active. They buy a lot, much more than you think. Yep. They're, of course, uh, easier to advertise to because they don't necessarily understand that it's an ad or yep. they don't differentiate between the types of content, I guess. It's not in a cynical way. It's just more active in general online. Like young people are, are significantly harder to sell to. Of course, I have like all kinds of customers, but the, the older demographic, like 70 to 80, are surprisingly active and completely not advertised to at all. So that, that's the reason why you switch to the Norway market? Or? No, it's just home market, own language. Mm -hmm phone number you can talk to them because i call a lot of stores before i buy i don't generally trust a brand new store okay do you okay uh yeah i do <laughs> I, I generally do yeah i don't i actually I don't, call. don't shop much online to be honest i don't shop much as well but when i shop i i buy i i don't ask yeah <laughs> we got amazon to sweden yesterday yeah yeah, yeah opened up yesterday yeah nice amazon.se and uh, Norway is kind of a, also Norway is a unique market, I have to say, because we have a uh, customs. Uh, Shipping. So, um, yeah. I mean, we're outside of the EU, so we're like, like Switzerland, like mm -hmm. the EEC. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, there is um, uh, there is a, a barrier. Um, there is a barrier to entry here, which makes it um, quite easy to 
to sell here and harder for people from abroad. So if you're a foreigner who's running a dropshipping business, you have you have this problem that people are uh, worried about getting a customs um, invoice after they get the, mm. the goods. So it's a unique marketer. Do you have any, uh, personally, because you have done it already, do you have any advice for people who are like uh, scared to scale or like just getting into it? Because your, your confidence thing is because you have a positive feedback loop, right? So what's yeah. your advice to those type of people? Oh, I mean, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, with, if I hadn't met you, I probably wouldn't even be in e-commerce now. <laughs> Wait, what? You're going to quit like, time. okay, okay. Uh, it was such a crucial time to, to get the right, like the right support. Okay. And it's so toxic to go on a place like YouTube or, or Instagram or something and you search for the word Shopify mm. and you see all these people trying to tell you what to do and you have all these techniques. It really reminds me a lot about finance and, and trading. You have a lot of the same dynamics and mm. it's hard to trust people. Yeah. It's hard to, because you really, it's just like either people click buy or they don't. So it's, it's kind of similar to trading where either you buy or you sell. I mean, it's, it's quite a simple thing, yeah. but it, it just involves human psychology from beginning to end. So you can't really give advice, but, but it's, it's a huge moneymaker if you have a, a high ticket uh, product yeah. or some kind of unique advantage. You have to have some kind of unique advantage and you cannot be selling random shit from AliExpress. It's not worth it. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I've considered a lot of products and I just, just haven't done it because there is every single thing is a saturated something or other. Mm -hmm. even here locally. So, and you, ha you have to, I don't, I don't know how to condense it into a philosophy. And I don't, I don't have to because my whole business is about myself. So yeah. I don't try to teach anyone anything. And like, uh, like if I have um, a niece or a nephew that's kind of hinting about getting a job or something like that, you really like, I'm glad, I'm glad to have anyone like help anyone and, and have a small job or, or something like this, but it really requires uh, them to put some effort in it themselves. Mm. And what I've noticed is that most people just don't because it's a huge commitment to start selling something. It's a new thing. Yeah. So this, I think this is the kind of business that uh, either you do it or you don't, you're, you're never going to be sort of talked into doing it. So yeah, is either, is either uh, you want it or not, not, basically. I don't have a philosophy around it. I can't condense it into some kind of nice uh, sort of bullet pointy kind of a thing. Yeah. Because it's really, for me, it's like I live in a unique way and I uh, like I live for work in a way. Mm. And I don't think it's a bad thing. And, uh, and I, I think you kind of have to have a psycho mentality to be able to start any kind of product like this because it just takes everything from you yeah but i just i still think it's worth it you, for your unique right you have a business partner is that correct yeah and he's he's yeah. one of my unique advantages or unique uh, benefits so uh, he, he is uh, the expert when it comes to phones in norway okay so and that that that's what I mean. You have to have some kind of advantage, some mm. kind of. Uh, so he just knows the product very uh, well, basically. Yeah, and mm. and uh, I mean, he was the first guy to start fixing phones and all these things in in the country. One of the first in the world. So I think uh, advantages like that are incredibly important. Yeah, but also the fact that it's so you have to go so deep into the. Uh, into the um, skill set acquisition skill set yeah yeah exactly you have to just live this so i don't have any friends on facebook or anything like i don't have anyone i i don't subscribe to anyone the only thing i i read on facebook is mm. stuff about advertisements that's yeah. all i have like advertisement <laughs> groups okay and ad creative groups and all these things yeah so i mean i think that's that's where you have to kind of be.
What what's the and the six four? I used to care about everything. I don't care about anything now. <laughs> I only care about work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Focus up, focus. Yeah, hundred percent. Do you do you? But have as a, you can tell, yeah. like I don't have a ready-made speech or anything, because okay, I'm just fine. focusing on myself. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Do you have a six-month time time plan from now to uh, whenever, or is it more like? Hey, let's just build uh, January first. Yeah. I'm moving everything into LLCs, mm. so uh, I've been uh, doing it sort of in a more haphazard way until now. Mm. So everything is going to be structured like each store is its own LLC, yeah. each project is its own LLC. I've been uh, scaling down everything else that's not e-commerce or or at least internet advertising yeah. uh, business. I'm I'm a little bit uh, flirting with uh, some lead generating businesses. Uh, but it's completely a different skill set, but it's all the same thing. So I just think it's fun to understand human psychology, understand like why people do what they do online. Yep. So I'm just focusing more on that. So I'm trying to increase my margins a little bit by using the doing the the lead generating business on top of it. Mm. But yeah, it's a, I, for me it's a natural match. But uh, I'm just more e-commerce. <laughs> uh more professional the, the structure yeah Understood. what about yourself uh for me um uh, building software and all and then just try to still on the same thing yeah <laughs> yeah there's, there's not, no change man 100 percent. yeah yeah like what's it called? Still, uh, yeah. what is it the software i know it's uh, i see the the, dead, the deadline looming here three oh, yeah, minutes yeah. and 13 seconds uh, it's, it's like a accounting. It's just loss to control app. how much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, 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 exactly, the like the the thing you you mentioned just now about the your Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, it's basically eliminate all of that. Yeah. 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 yeah it's really good. Do you yeah. pay per user or something like that? Uh, yeah, correct. How do you it's make like money? a recurring revenue model. So it's a yeah per month sort of thing, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, because what the the one of the last things, the reasons why I trusted you, you didn't talk about revenue. You only talked about uh, ROAS and net income. Yeah, uh, yeah. or ROAS, yeah, net income, whatever. You talked about real numbers. Yeah, like you like you said, right? You're you're gonna do six hundred. Is it six hundred k, right? Uh, USD this year with two hundred k net profit. Uh, I'm doing it analyzed, so uh, okay. annualized. So if I if I Continue didn't this have momentum. the slump in the beginning, yeah. Okay. So my idea is to keep it that or or double. Like I'm trying to double every year. That's my goal. I've been doing it for a few years now. So. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, that, that net income, like you said, the free cash flow is what matters. That 200k. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, like, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I, I don't like it. But also, people, you, know. you have to also like I'm I'm not too worried about, for instance, like my product costs now. Yeah because uh, they've been going up because of Corona, of course, because transportation costs are just immense now. Mm. They cost more than the product almost. And, uh, but I'm not too worried about that now. I'm trying to keep everything just rolling and the things working mm. and slowly evolve, but also sort of adding complexities to it. And while I do that, it's sort of just, um, it comes down the the cost basis, but yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I see the countdown time as well. <laughs> Do you have any yeah, last yeah, words that you at wanna it. say? Any last no, advice? It's or? weird talking about this because I used to be a journalist and I used to uh, have uh, like a high. You interview people. When it came to... No, I used to be on Twitter and I always had this concise answer to everything and yeah. trying to sound smart and I don't anymore. So I sound like a moron. I don't really speak that much English anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I sound like an idiot because like I didn't I didn't plan out what to say I don't have a good I don't have a good uh, answer to to that question and uh, like w w yeah okay what 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 did you wish you knew uh, that that information that you know now that you wish that you knew in the past that's interesting I wish I'd seen your video earlier and I, <laughs> I wish I never used an agency. Okay. So, so basically never, ever things use on, your, on your own hands. Okay. Yeah. You have to control the budget. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
So uh, I only have one agency experience. I know you run an agency. Yeah. I have no experience with your agency, and I'm sure it's fine. But my agency that I used was just a 